This is a Halifax Regional Arts production. Halifax Regional Arts is the supplementary funded fine arts school that provides support and enhancement across the HRCE for music, dance, drama, and visual art. We graciously acknowledge the support of HRM taxpayers and Halifax City Council in providing the support that makes so many amazing arts experiences possible for our students. This production of Twelfth Night was originally envisioned as a live performance in the spring of 2020, featuring secondary students from across the Halifax Regional Centre for Education. Despite the COVID-19 pandemic forcing students to isolate at home, the student actors committed to finishing the project in an online format, rehearsing and recording the play in a series of virtual meets throughout the spring of 2020. This audio version of Twelfth Night is the end result of countless hours of volunteer time on the part of our students under the guidance and direction of Shakespeare by the Seas, Drew Duris O'Hara. This is an abridged version of Twelfth Night which has been edited for time. The adaptation was done by Drew Duris O'Hara in 2020. Act 1, Scene 1, Duke Orsino's Palace. Enter Duke Orsino. And Curio. If music be the food of love, play on! Give me excess of it, that surfeiting the appetite may sicken, and so die. That strain again, it had a dying fall, oh, it came o'er my ear like the sweet sound that breathes upon a bank of violets, stealing and giving odor. Enough! No more. Tis not so sweet now as it was before. Will you go hunt, my lord? What, Curio? The heart. Why, so I do, the noblest that I have. Oh, in my eyes did see Olivia first. Methought she purged the air of pestilence. That instant was I turned into a heart, and my desires, like fell and cruel hounds, e'er since pursued me. Enter Valentine. And first lord. How now? What news from her? So, please, my lord, we might not be admitted, but from her handmaid do return this answer. The element itself, till seven years' heat, shall not behold her face at ample view. Like a cloister, she will veiled walk, and water once a day her chamber round with eye-offending brine. All this to season her a brother's dead love, which she should keep fresh and lasting in her sad remembrance. Oh, she that hath a heart of that fine frame, to pay this debt of love but to a brother! How will she love when the rich golden shaft hath killed the flock of all affections else, that live in her when liver, brain, and heart, these sovereign thrones, are all supplied and filled with sweet perfections with one self, King. <sighs> Away before me to sweet beds of flowers. Love thoughts lie rich when canopied with bower. Act one, two, two, the sea coast. Enter Viola. A captain. First sailor and second sailor. What country, friends, is this? This is Illyria, lady. And what should I do in Illyria? My brother, he is in Elysium. Perchance he is not drowned. What think you, sailors? It is perchance that you yourself were saved. Knowest thou this country? Who governs here? A noble duke, in nature as his name, Orsino. Orsino? I have heard my father name him. He was a bachelor then. And so is now, or was so very late, for but a month ago t'was fresh in murmur that he did seek the love of fair Olivia. What's she? A virtuous maid, 
the daughter of a count that died some 12 months since? Then leaving her in the protection of his son, her brother, who shortly also died. For whose dear love they say, she hath abjured the company and sight of men. Oh, that I served that lady, and might not be delivered to the world, till I had made mine own occasion mellow what my estate is. That were hard to compass, because she will admit no kind of suit. No, not the duke's. There is a fair behavior in thee, Captain, I prithee, and I'll pay thee bountifully. Conceal me what I am, I'll serve this duke. Thou shalt present me as a servant to him. What else may hap to time I will commit, only shape thou silence to my wit. Be you a servant, and your mute I'll be, when my tongue blabs and let my eyes not see. I thank thee, aid me on. Act 1, Scene 3, Olivia's House. Enter so Toby Belch. And Ryan. What a plague means my niece to take the death of her brother thus. I am sure cares an enemy to life. By my troth, Sir Toby, you must come in earlier on nights. Your cousin, Olivia, my lady, takes great exceptions to your ill hours. You must confine yourself within the modest limits of order. Confine? I'll confine myself no finer than I am. These clothes are good enough to drink in, and so be these boots too. And they be not, let them hang themselves in their own straps. That quaffing and drinking will undo you. I heard my lady talk of it yesterday, and of a foolish knight that you brought one night here to woo her. Who? Sir Andrew Egucheek? Eh, he. He's as tall a man as any's in Illyria. Uh, what's that to the purpose? Why, he has three thousand ducats a year. Aye, but he'll have but a year in all these ducats. He's a very fool and a prodigal. By this hand, there are scoundrels and subtractors that say so of him. Who are they? They that add moreover he's drunk, nightly, in your company. With drinking health to my niece! Ah, here comes Sir Andrew Agaface. Enter Sir Andrew. Sir Toby Belch! How now, Sir Toby Belch? Sweet Sir Andrew! Bless you, fair shrew. And you too, sir. A cost, Sir Andrew, a cost! What's that? My niece's chambermaid? Good mistress, a cost. I desire better acquaintance. My name is Mary, sir. Good mistress, Mary, a cost. You mistake, knight. A cost is front her, board her, woo her, assail her. Is that the meaning of a cost? <laughs> Fare you well, gentlemen. Fair lady, do you think you have fools in hand? Sir, I have not you by the hand. Mary, but you shall have, and here's my hand. It's dry, sir. Why, I think so. I am not such an ass, but I can keep my hand dry. But what's your jest? A dry jest, sir. Exit Mariah. Oh, knight! When did I see thee so put down? Never in your life, I think, unless you see the drink put me down. Methinks sometimes I have no more wit than a Christian or an ordinary man has, but I am a great eater of beef, and I believe that does harm to my wit. No question. I'll ride home tomorrow, Sir Toby. Pourquoi, my dear knight? What is pourquoi? Do or not do, faith? I'll be home tomorrow, Sir Toby. Your niece will not be seen, or if she be, it's four to one, she'll none of me. The Count himself here, hard by woos her. She'll none of the Count. I have heard her swear it. Tut, there's life in it, man. I'll stay a month longer. I'm a fellow of the strangest mind in the world. <laughs> what is thy excellence in a galliard knight? Faith, I can cut a caper. And I can cut the mutton to it. And I think I have the back trick simply as strong as any man in Illyria. Wherefore are these things hid? Why dost thou not go to church in a galliard and come home in a Coranto? My very walk should be a jig. Is it a world to hide virtues in? Shall we set about some revels? What shall we do else? Let me see the caper. Ha! Higher! Ha ha ha! Excellent! Act 1. 
Unseen Four, the Duke's Alice. Ha- Enter Val- Valentine, Isla, and Va- in man's attire. If the Duke continue these favors towards you, Cesario, you would like to be much advanced. He hath known you but three days, and already you are no stranger. I thank you. Here comes the Count. Enter Duke Orsino. Stand you a while, aloof. Exit Valentine. Cesario, thou knowest no less but all. I have unclasped to thee the book of even my secret soul. Therefore, good youth, address thy gate unto Olivia. My noble lord, she never will admit me. Be clamorous and leave all civil bounds, rather than make unprofited return. Say I do speak with her, my lord. What then? Oh, then, unfold the passion of my love. It shall become thee well to act my woes. I think not so, my lord. Dear lad, believe it. I know thy consolation is right after this affair. Do prosper well in this, and know thou shalt live as freely as thy lord, to call his fortunes thine. I'll do my best to woo your lady. Exit Duke Orsino. Yet a barful strife, who e'er I woo, myself would be his wife. Exit Byla. Act 1, Scene 5, Olivia's House. Enter Mariah. First maid. Second maid. And third maid. And feste. Nay, either tell us where thou hast been, or my lady will hang thee for thy absence. Let her hang me. Many a good hanging prevents a bad marriage. You are resolute, then? Not so neither, but I am resolved on two points. Hmm. That if one break, the other will hold, or if both break, your trousers fall. Well, go thy way. If Sir Toby would leave drinking, thou wert as witty a piece of Eve's flesh as any in Illyria. Peace, you rogue, no more of that. Here comes our lady. Make your excuse wisely, you were best. Exit Mariah. And first maid. Second maid. And third maid. Wit, and it be thy will. Put me into good fooling. Better a witty fool than a foolish wit. Enter Olivia. And Malvolio. God bless thee, lady. Take the fool away. Do you not hear, fellow? Take away the lady. Go to. You're a dry fool. I'll know more of you. Besides, you grow dishonest. Two faults, Madonna. That drink and good counsel will amend. For give the dry fool drink, then is the fool not dry? Bid the dishonest man mend himself. If he mend, he is no longer dishonest. The lady bad take away the fool, therefore I say again, take her away. Sir, I bade them take away you. Miss Prisian to the highest degree. Good Madonna, give me leave to prove you a fool. Can you do it? Dexterously, good Madonna. Well, sir, for want of other idleness, I'll bide your proof. Good Madonna, why mournst thou? Good fool, for my brother's death. I think his soul is in hell, Madonna. I know his soul is in heaven, fool. Ha! The more fool, Madonna, to mourn for your brother's soul being in heaven. (laughs) Take away the fool. What think you of this fool, Malvolio? Doth he not mend? Yes, and shall do till the pangs of death shake him. Infirmity that decays the wise doth ever make the better fool. God send you, sir, a speedy infirmity. (laughs) What say you to that, Malvolio? I marvel your ladyship takes delight in such a barren rascal. Look you now, he's out of his guard already. Unless you laugh and minister occasion to him, he is gagged. Oh, you are sick with self-love, Malvolio, and taste with a distempered appetite. Re-enter third maid. Madam, there is at the gate a young man much desire to speak with you. From the Count Orsino, is it? I know not, madam. Tis a fair young man. Uh, who of my people hold him in delay? Sir Toby, madam, your kinsman. Oh, fetch him off, I pray you. He speaks nothing but madmen. Fie on him. Exit third maid. Go you, Malvolio. If it be a suit from the Count, I am sick or not at home. What you will to dismiss it? Exit Malvolio. Enter Sir Toby Belch. 
Christmas Day. By my honor, half drunk. What is, what is he at the gate, cousin? A gentleman. A gentleman? What gentleman? Tis a gentleman here. A plague of these pickle herring. Oh, oh now, sucks. Good Sir Toby. Cousin, cousin, how have you come so early by this lethargy? Lechery? I defy lechery. There's one at the gate. I, Mary, what is he? Let him be the devil and he will. I care not. Give me faith, I say. It's all one. Exit Sir Toby Belch. What's a drunken man like, fool? Like a drowned man, a fool, and a madman. One drink makes him a fool, the second mads him, and a third drowns him. Go thou and seek the coroner. He's drowned. He is but mad, yes, Madonna. And the fool shall look to the madman. Exit Feste. Re-enter Malvolio. First maid, second maid, and third maid. Madam, yawned. Young fellow swears he will speak with you. We told him you were sick. He takes on him to understand so much, and therefore comes to speak with you. We told him you were asleep. He seems to have foreknowledge of that too, and therefore comes to speak with you. What is to be said to him, my lady? What kind of man is he? Why of mankind? What manner of man? A very ill manner. He'll speak with you. Will you or no? Let him approach. Leave me a gentlewoman. Gentlewoman, my lady calls. Exit Malvolio. Second maid. And third maid. Give me my veil. Come, throw it over my face. We'll once more hear of Orsino's embassy. Enter Viola. The honorable lady of the house, which is she? Speak to me. I shall answer for her. Your will? Most radiant, exquisite, and unmatchable beauty, I pray you, tell me if this be the lady of the house, for I never saw her. I would be loath to cast away my speech. I have taken great pains to learn it. Whence came you, sir? I could say little more than I have studied, and that question's out of my part. Are you a comedian? No, my profound heart, and yet I am not that I play. Are you the lady of the house? I will on with my speech in your praise, and then show you the heart of my message. Come to what is important in it. I forgive you the praise. Alas, I took great pains to study it, and tis poetical. It is the more likely to be feigned. I pray you keep it in. I heard you were saucy at my gates, and allowed your approach rather to wonder at you than to hear you. If you be not mad, be gone. If you have reason, be brief. Will you hoist sail, sir? Here lies your way. No good swabber. I am to hull here a little longer. Some mollification for your giant, sweet lady. Oh. Tell me your mind. I am a messenger. <laughs> what are you? What would you? What I am and what I would are as secret as maidenhead. To your ears, divinity. To any others, profanation. Give us the place alone. We will hear this divinity. Exit first maid. Now, sir, what is your text? Most sweet lady. A comfortable doctrine, and much may be said of it. Where lies your text? In Orsito's bosom. In his bosom? In what chapter of his bosom? In the first of his heart. Oh, I have read it. It is heresy. Have you no more to say? Good madam, let me see your face. Have you any commission from your lord to negotiate with my face? You are now out of your text, but we will draw the curtain and show you the picture. Look you, sir, it's not well done. Excellently done, if God did all. Tis in grain, sir, twill endure wind and weather. Lady, you are the cruelest she alive if you will lead these graces to the grave and leave no copy. Oh, sir, I will not be so hard-hearted. 
I will give out diverse schedules of my beauty. It shall be inventoried, and every particle and utensil labeled to my will, as item, two lips in different red. Item, two gray eyes with lids to them. Item, one neck, one chin, and so forth. Where are you sent hither to praise me? I see you what you are, you are too proud. But if you were the devil, you are fair. My lord and master loves you. How does he love me? With adorations, fertile tears, with groans that thunder love, with sighs of fire. Your lord does know my mind. I cannot love him. He might have took his answer long ago. If I did love you in my master's flame, in your denial I would find no sense. I would not understand it. I, what would you? Make me a willow cabin at your gate, and call upon my soul within the house. Write loyal cantons of contemned love, and sing them loud even in the dead of night. Halloo your name to the reverberate hills, and make the babbling gossip of the air cry out, Olivia! Oh, you should not rest between the elements of air and earth, but you should pity me. You might do much. What is your parentage? Above my fortunes, yet my state is well. I am a gentleman. Get you to your lord. I cannot love him. Let him send no more. Unless, perchance, you come to me again to tell me how he takes it. Fare you well. I thank you for your pains. Spend this for me. I am no feed post, lady. Keep your purse. My master, not myself, lacks recompense. Farewell, fair cruelty. Exit Viola. What is your parentage? Above my fortunes, yet my state is well. I am a gentleman. I'll be sworn thou art. How now? Even so quickly may one catch the plague? What ho, gentlewomen? Re-enter first maid, second maid, and third maid. Here, madam, at your service. Run after that same peevish messenger, the county's man. He left this ring behind him. Would I or no? Tell him I'll none of it. If that the youth will come again this way tomorrow, I'll give him reasons for it. Canst thou do this? Madame, we will. Exit first maid, second maid, and third maid. I do, I know not what, and fear to find mine I too great a flatterer for my mind. Fate, show thy force ourselves we do not owe. What is decreed must be, and be this so. Exit Olivia. Thanks for listening. This production of Twelfth Night was an original adaptation by Drew Duris O'Hara. It featured the talents of the following artists. Carly Thomas, Alexis Johnston, Zach Russell, Kaylin George Wagner, Annie Gavin, Molly Anderson, Jarrah Chisholm, Aidan Bradshaw, Mikhail Oikel, Ella Buckler, Maggie Dessonier, Emma Toop, Kaylin McKay, Gracie McNeil, Lael Grant Church, Jake Wilkie, Mariah Collins, with original music by Indy Tissoy, stage managed by Naomi Danzi. Additional text coaching by Jay Duris O'Hara. Jonathan Grady was our fearless producer. Special thanks to David Zink and Halifax Regional Arts for making this all happen. And finally, this production was edited by Josh Credis 